हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स वंस अगेन अ वेरी वेरी वार्म वेलकम टू योर ओन चैनल रिलेटेड विद इंग्लिश लिटरेचर दैट इज लेट ई सिटी ओके फ्रेंड्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइम्स विच वर कंपोज विच वर रिटर्न इन ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी वी हैव सीन मैनी इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइम्स इन दिस सीरीज ऑलरेडी एंड आई होप यू आर गेटिंग टू नो अबाउट मोर अबाउट द थीम्स सिम्बल सब्जेक्ट मैटर ट्रीटमेंट बाय द मेजर poets major poetic writers of the 20th century today we are going to discuss some more poems by uh, poets like larkin shimas heeny elizabeth zanings and louis macnees uh, friends uh, i would uh, suggest that you should also read about uh, somewhat their biographical details uh, though it is not of uh, such a great importance uh, for net aspirants but uh, still it gives you an idea uh, how and why they pick a particular topic or theme in their writing so okay without wasting any more time let's start our this lesson and the first poem with which we start this lesson is uh, one of the most popular poems of the 20th century century in fact it is a part it is very uh, it is very common to found this uh, common to find this poem in poetic anthologies of 20th century friends i am talking about church going okay church going uh, this poem is written by philip larkin we have already discussed uh, some poems by larkin in our earlier lessons now in this one of the best poems of larkin it was published in 1955 uh, in his very popular uh, collection the less deceived in fact the less deceived is uh, larkin's greatest contribution to english poetry okay uh, uh, the title may suggest uh, a kind of a religious connotation to the poem but it is not about the traditional religious experience of attending a church service or of uh, giving vent to religious sentiment but rather it is a touristy activity a curious uh, tourist to make uh, a tour of uh, various churches in england and what are his impressions wo sara is poem ke andar bataya gaya hai the speaker may be the poet himself once again uh, he is a bike riding tourist uh, and uh, he visits different churches explores their historical and cultural riches and thus creates a personal collection of the artistic treasures of the british world uh, and, and in a typical larkin manner there is a wry irony there is a very sardonic tone but also a sense of uh, we can say a regret a sense of loss which is a hallmark of larkins and in fact most of the modernist writers okay the poem begins with a very famous line once i am sure there is nothing going on i step inside uh, even the very first line gives the idea that the poet does not want to attend a service a community service but rather he wants to visit the place when there is nothing going on uh, begin, uh, with this line he begins his journey uh, uh, we can understand the visitor is a shy and uh, typical larkinist figure which we witness in many of his poems like uh, toads and Uh, other poems once in the church the observers i roams around he he is curious about uh, different religious objects the matting on the floor seats the little books to the wilted flowers wilted flowers you can look at the uh, adjectives um, he employs to create the scene some brass and stuff and a small neat organ all these things things all these objects are integral part of any religious uh, place especially a church absolutely nothing there is exceptional or exciting uh, so it is a kind of a boring little holy place then 
emboldened by the musty emptiness of the church once again look at the choice of the adjective musty it is not very refreshing the silence is not uh, which uh, inspires a kind of uh, meditative uh, mood but rather musty emptiness of the of the church and the absence of the authorities uh, now the speaker he touches the sacred objects move around and then he mounts the lectern the lectern is the place from where a uh, father from where the church authorities give lecture uh, to the assembled uh, people so because the church is empty uh, the speaker mounts uh, to the lectern his voice betrays him there uh, he uh, begins to feel a kind of nervousness and feeling jittery and too loud in this silent world it pronounces a very significant and symbolic phrase and this is here endeth now what does ends does it mean does it imply uh, his religious convictions does it the service does it imp so there may be different meanings of this simple phrase here ended the visitors retreat from the church follow some usual steps okay back at the door i sign the book the book which is there for visitors uh, to point their remarks and donate an irish sixpence once again you can see uh, the dry irony the sardonic tone for which larkin is famous and he donates an irish sixpence the final thought before stepping out is that the place was not worth stopping for so basically his experience teaches him that church is not a very exciting place to visit for a tourist it is just a religious place a typical larkin melancholic cynical and disappointing conclusion however uh, surprisingly when we uh, when we come to the third stanza the poem moves from the introductory descriptive mode which was all about his visit to the church now we are into a much more serious contemplative philosophical and theological mode and now breath taking exploration of the meaning of the organized religion for like christianity hinduism or um, uh, any any other islam any other religion which is organized uh, it is organized through the medium of buildings particular customs ceremonies and then the destiny of the modern world which is increasingly distancing itself from the mystical and the mythological experiences of the past the poet uh, thinks about mulls over ruminates about how the world is growing separate from the religious world we are no more following the religion as we used to during the past century so poet thinks what will be the final outcome of this distancing uh, of this going away uh, from the religion you can here remember famous poem dower beach by matthew arnold in which he points out that we are continuously regressing from our uh, in our approach towards uh, organized religion significantly these new and intense thoughts have been provoked by a small insignificant and pathetic church he himself has pointed out it is not a place which uh, which uh, inspires anything in him it is a simple it is a very uh, we can say insignificant uh, monument which was not worth stopping for he has already pointed out yet to stop i did says the speaker here lies the paradox though outside coming outside he feels that he has almost wasted his time but But still, he says that something there was which made him stop uh, there and uh, to be made him visit the church. Now, the poet uh, uh, thinks uh, hypothetically. 
points out one uh, thought that when churches fall completely out of use he thinks about a future time when people no more uh, would visit church like him there will be uh, more and more people and one day will come when churches fall completely out of use what shall then be their use shall we avoid them as unlucky place uh, what is the church goer now the speaker imagination explores the possible uses of these ubiquitous which are to be found everywhere in every nook and corner of the uh, not only of uh, London or England but whole of Europe uh, but they will become unused churches the speaker imagines some dubious women making their children touch a particular stone that is hint of superstition which we Indians can feel very well and good luck health and spiritual revelation uh, being brought uh, brought out by these uh, holy shrines or there may be another possibility people may come to pick herbs from the churchyard in an attempt to cure cancer once again a kind of belief who will be the very last person to visit the church a rune bibber one who likes to go in search of old antiques not for some spiritual or religious uh, uh, reason but rather to collect uh, some uh, ancient or some uh, we can say antique item uh, from that rune but the speaker who considers himself a rational man he speculates superstitions like belief must die and what remains when disbelief has gone even after this phase is over even when superstition will die what will happen then the answer is bleak defeating and disturbing which is once again a common feature of Larkin's poetry grass weedy pavement brambles buttress sky a shape less recognizable each week a purpose more obscure the purpose behind this building will lost its cause people will forget why this church was built so it will become obscure day by day bold and uninformed he sees him Himself and honestly confess the speaker senses somehow that this little church however unimportant even cheap speaks yet about a profound human desire and need here comes the conclusion he is able to find out at least one significant contribution of the church he proclaims with warmth and something that sounds like a trembling voice it pleases me to stand in silence here he says that even though he knows that the church in future time will uh, lost its religious value but the poet feels that still I feel a kind of uh, a pleasure standing here and thinking about mortality mortality the last stanza begins with some truly touching and profound words of religious proportion like a typical saint like a typical uh, we can say a person of meditation turn he says a serious house on a serious earth it is his whole perception is now changed he calls the church a serious house on the serious earth in whose blank air all our compulsions meet it continues to the very apotheosis of human hunger in himself to be more serious church gives the purpose uh, uh, some seriousness to the human existence and it becomes a sacred place proper to grow wise in the this place gives an opportunity to common humanity to enter its to enter the threshold and become more wiser to understand the mysteries of death and life the final line surprises with a paradoxical thought that the wisdom of that holy place is also guaranteed by so many dead people who are buried here they are like symbols they are like proof that yes churches will 
very significant value in human life they teaches us the lesson of life that is all of us are mortal all of uh, all of us have to be buried one day so many dead lie around and churches are fine places to cultivate wisdom not least because they remind us that our time on earth is short this is the most important lesson which churches uh, though they are just buildings but even the building is able to give us this uh, ultimate lesson okay friends moving forward to our next poem that is bagpipe music which was composed in 1937 by louis macnees who himself was um, we can say member of mac spande group now louis macnees uh, he he was an irish poet and he was a prominent member of orden spander uh, the it, it is also known as mac spande group mac for louis macnee and spand for his spender uh, uh, it also has cecil de lewis and uh, wh orden all these poets were active during the 30s and 40s and they all were uh, a, a kind of leftist leaning uh, they all were politically charged poets and his poetry is filled with melancholy skepticism and thus he is true representative of the modern poetry it is one of his most popular poems and it was published in uh, the earth compels uh, the second poetry collection by macnees now bagpipe music is is scathing portrait of the economically depressed scotland of the 30s and it is also a caricature of the cultural ephemera of the era what were the um, main issues of the economic that time and how people were duped into following certain uh, capitalist uh, cultural ephemeral things that is satirized in this poem macnees himself described it as a satirical elegy for the gaelic districts of scotland and for all the traditional culture so it's not just limited to one particular place scotland but it is basically a very fiery satire against all the capitalist uh, uh, features of the modern society uh, the 34 lines uh, the poem has 34 lines and they alternate between quatrains and couplets and the rhyme scheme is uh aa bb okay uh, the backdrop of economic and political futility the, there is a kind of uh, disappointment in the air and various characters appear in this poem uh, and they suffer common mishaps for example one character is that of john mcdonald who takes a corpse home with him when it comes to the life the corpse it comes to the life and he clubs uh, once again hits it with a poker and sells its eyes for souvenirs its blood for whiskey you can see the grossness of the imagery points out the mishappenings of the life of poor miss carmichael another character she has a fifth child and then she says to midwife take it away i am through with over production once again you can see the cruelty of irony is very much apparent here meanwhile amid the calamities of the poor the rich and the powerful whose halls are lined with tiger rugs and their walls with the heads of bison so you can see the great difference the great contrast between the lives of poor and the rich their halls are lined with the fur of animals they remain bleakly and drunkenly oblivious to the problem of the poor now the poem has a couplet refrain that begin it is no go the very famous refrain and it always followed by all we want is and different thing fulfill for example it is no go the yogi man it is no go blavatsky all we want is a bank balance and a bit of a skirt in a taxi you can uh, look at the um, very strange combination of rhymes you can look at how he has used uh, the features of capitalist society how they lure us into following a particular pattern of consumerism spiritualism is even it has been 
become a, a kind of commodity it is which is represented by women like blavatsky it is a no go they do not need it the common people poor people they do not need such uh, commodities merry go rounds rickshaws governments grants elections herring board bible all these things have become useless to these people what is wanted is a bit of lewd romp sugar stick to quiet the baby or a cigarette simple common things which gives enjoyment even though this enjoyment is temporary is more important for these resourceless people still the poem ends on the futility of trying to make the day pause long enough to seize it the very old theme that whatever you do the life this life is very short to have your fill of enjoyment the glass may be falling hour by hour but even if you break the bloody glass you won't hold up the weather you cannot beat the time you cannot uh, feel uh, you cannot escape uh, the heat of uh, time which is chasing you even if you break the glass there will be no use you won't hold up the weather <coughs> okay now we will discuss blackberry picking which is a poem by shimas hine now shimas hine's first book death of a naturalist this poem is a very uh, they share a very common theme which is found in hine's poetry which is death of a childish romanticism what as a child hine uh, felt towards the world and what as a grown up he realized uh, so it is birth of a more realistic view it is like like a disillusionment uh, of a romantic dreamer the poem is dedicated to philip hobsbawm who was a lecturer in english at queens university belfast in fact he conducted many poetic workshops in which heeny was also heeny also participated as a student the poem has 24 lines iambic pentameter and divided into two stanzas just like a sonnet in which we have a quatrain a uh, two quart three quatrains and a couplet or an octave or sestet this poem is also divided into two parts and uh, these two parts are basically presented as two point of views one that is of a child full of dreams and uh, uh, we can say ideal uh, romanticism and the other one is that of the adult who knows the reality of the world first part of the poem describes the picking of the berries while the second describes the futile effort to preserve them okay the poem begins with the uh, description of uh, berries that then even this uh, the description itself is mouth watering you ate that first one and its flesh was sweet like thickened wine you can feel the sensuous imagery you can feel the juice you can feel the fruit itself on your tongue there is an undercurrent of pain loss even violence as the picker's hand peppered with thorn pricks our palms sticky as bluebirds so now this theme is more made more explicit in the second part of the poem when the cache of the berries now developing into a rat grey fungus now the boy the child has uh, gathered has he has accumulated these ripened berries but very soon he founds that he finds that these berries are now uh, they are uh, uh, developing a kind of fungus and they are in the process of rotting down it ferments and sows the boy in the poem has his innocence compromised each year i hoped they would keep new they would not this is the uh, real dilemma of our life we consider because these blackberries we can uh, consider them as symbols to all our childish dreams and aspiration each year we hope that they will survive or they will uh, become realities new they would not but in our hearts of hearts you may remember uh, the very famous poem spring and fall by hopkins in which uh, a young girl uh, as she witnesses uh, the falling of leaves she also undergoes the same transformation 
ओके फ्रेंड्स द लास्ट पॉइम फॉर दिस लेसन इज चॉइसिस बाय एलिजाबेथ जैनिंग्स नाउ एलिजाबेथ जैनिंग्स इज नोन फॉर हर लिरिक पोइट्री एंड जैनिंग्स इज वन ऑफ द मेंबर्स ऑफ द मूवमेंट ग्रुप द मूवमेंट व्हिच इंक्लूडेड पोइट्स लाइक लॉकिन किंग्सले एमिस एंड टॉम गन शी इज आल्सो नोन एज द बैग लेडी ऑफ द सोनेट्स एंड वन ऑफ द मेजर कैथोलिक पोइटिक वॉइसेस ऑफ द second half of 20th century in this poem the narrator is outside looking in so uh, reflecting on the choices she has made and the road she has decided not to take even this line uh, will uh, remind you of the very famous poem by the american poet robert frost the road not taken similarly uh, the narrator in this poem is also thinking about the choices she has made and choice uh, because of the choices what she was not able to do at the same time jannings suggest it may well be those inside are reflecting on choices they have made as well every time life offers you a kind of uh, uh, optional uh, strategy where you have to pick one out of two uh, there is always possibility that both parties are thinking about the alternative choice so uh, nine rhyming couplets the speaker watches a couple inside the house and perhaps it is dinner time going on and the couple is so deep in tenderness they cannot speak a word of happiness the neighborhood speaks of a suburban comfort so it's a we can say <clears throat> a very comfortable house in a posh area cared for lawn so there is a gardener for it a roof that is their own so it is not a rented flat a dog barking they can afford a pet the speaker indicates she has designed a way to live she has made her own choices she clothed in confusion sat their choices by but inside the room also the couple are warm in a patch of light while outside with her breath warming the air she watches as the day closes and her shadow lengthens so uh, the there, there is total contrast between two situation the speaker is outside the couple is inside the speaker has made her choices the couple inside has had made their own choices the uh, outside there is uh, atmosphere cold atmosphere inside there is warmth of light so a complete contrast is going by now uh, the tone of the poem now changes one looks up the out of the these two person who are inside one looks up she continues with the pronoun he and it suggests that the one who looks up is the husband who sees her standing outside feeling her watching he opens the window stares at her maybe he is also regretting the choices he made maybe wondering how his life could be different he if he stepped out into the dark night away from the patch of light this is what is dilemma of life is when you come across two alternatives one you pick always you have in your mind the other one which you have left and you always your mind is fighting uh, this dilemma what if i have chosen the second one okay the speaker describes the man as seeming to urge her darkness into the room to let a little of her otherness into his comfortable predictable suburban life so even the man still wants to confront the second option in his life as the poem ends with the sentence we need each other's need so both have needs which can be fulfilled by the other person both are complementary to each other still both have picked uh, different ways in their life the speaker and the man know each other we don't know uh, or her spying is random the choices is clearly about people who have chosen a path who at least momentarily acknowledge that there were other direction their lives could have 
taken this is one of the regrets we all feel in our life at one or other stage okay friends that uh, that's all for today's lesson i hope you enjoy all these beautiful poems please if you have uh, any chance go and read the poems text also so that you can fully enjoy the poems and i also thank you for your uh, kind comments and suggestions please keep on continue keep continue uh, pointing out the areas where we can improve our lesson thank you my dear friends